We'll be working on the same page we already made. But before, we'll just need to delete this widget. We are going to edit the hero widget. We are also going to delete all of the frames except the first one. And now we are going to work with the frame left. We'll start by changing the background image. And let's go to the stock photos tab. You can also choose photos from the media library. It doesn't actually matter now. What we need right now is a picture of computers or a computer. Now, let's go to the alt text in the attachment details menu. In here, you go to the alt text box and write the key phrase you are working on. For instance, in this sample website, we're going to build a website for a computer store and stuff. If your key phrase is Kung Fu School in Las Vegas, that's what you should write in this box. When you are done, click on Set Media. Now we're going to customize our hero frame. This won't take long, since we have already done this in previous lectures. Oh, I want to show you what the hero frame looks with opacity set to 100%. Look, there is not a transparent layer in between the text and the picture. That's what the opacity does in the hero frame. Let's set it to almost 500%. See, now it looks way different. Now, let's go to the content box and change this text. Let's write the key phrase. We can even write a second line. Set it to heading number four and aligned center. Now, let's customize our button. For now, we will delete the destination URL and check in the Open in a new window option. Let's change the call to action text for Get our latest news. This button will open a subscription form. I will teach you how to do this in the coming lectures. We're going to change all of the other options for our button. Let's change the icon color, but before, I want to show you something really cool. There is this online tool called Colorsupply.com. Color Supply is an online app that helps you to choose the best color combination for any design you want. You just need to adjust to any color you wish like this. This is especially important for us because we need to maintain a corporate identity. Down here, you can see some actual samples on how to use the colors for your designs. And here, you can get the codes for colors. We'll be copying and pasting these codes into our website so we can get the very same tones. Copy the color you want and go back to your button settings. Paste it on the button color box. Now choose a text color that will distinguish from your button color. Basically, if your button is, door, is dar a dark color, your text must be a light color. Now let's choose an icon and let's preview our hero widget. Excellent. But you know what? I think we need to change the opacity in our hero widget to blue. So let's go back to color supply and select the darkest blue color. Go back to your background options and here we are going to change the color of our background. Paste the code into your background color box. Oops, for some reason I didn't copy the correct color so let's go back and copy the right code. There it is. Let's preview our widget. Excellent. It looks better. Let's set a darker tone to our opacity. Let's preview once again. It looks better. 
Let's fold every menu and click on Done. Let's preview our page. This is how our website will lo actually look so far. Looks nice, right? The hero widget is kind of always the, very, the, f the best first thing to show your visitors. Now let's go back to our page editor. We're going to keep adding elements to our website. Let's work on our second row. If you deleted this row before, just add a new row. We are going to edit our row. Make two columns for this row. You can see every column is set to the same size, 50% each one. Click on Done. Now we have a two column row and we can drag and drop as many elements as as we want in each column. To do this, we need to click on the side of the row we want to work on, like this. Click on Add Widget button. We're going to add a big icon to display. Look for the Site Origin Icon widget and click on it to add it to your page. There. Click on the icon widget to edit it and we are going to select an icon. For now, we're going to search for a computer icon. This one is perfect. Click on it to select it. And now let's change its color. Go back to the Color Supply app and select a color. Let's use the mid blue color. Paste it on the color box. Now we're going to set the ideal size. Let's see how it looks when the size is set to 40 pixels. You can preview your icon. Hmm, too small. Let's change it to 120 pixels. Bigger, but we need it to be bigger yet. Let's try 140 pixels. This is fine. Go back and click on Done. Now let's add a headline in, in here. Click on the row to add a headline widget. Let's look for the headline widget. Click on it. As you can see, the headline widget was placed below our icon. By default, every new widget you add in rows where there is already a widget will be placed below all of the other widgets. Now let's edit our headline widget. The headline widget will help us to create awesome titles to display in our page. You'll see, in your widget, there are three sections to cu customize. First, we have our headline, which is the main title. Second, we have our sub-headline, which is the text after the main title, almost always a little smaller in size. Then we have our divider. This is a line we can choose to display below our headline. I'll show you. Let's write some text to display in our headline. The HTML tag is the size of our headline. There are seven options to choose from. I usually work with H1 to H4. Let's select a color for our headline from the Color Supply app. You can change the font if you wish. For now, I want us to work with the theme font. And here, I will change the alignment of our headline. Let's choose Center. In the Divider section, there are several options to choose from. Most of the times, I work with the Solid Divider. For now, I choose to work with the solid divider as well. Check the use fit text to adapt the headline to the screen size and preview the widget. Let's go back. Add a subheadline. The process to add a subheadline is the same as headlines. For this subheadline, we're going to work with the H3 
HTML tag. Let's preview once again. There it is, but you know what? I don't like it. Let's make a few more changes. I think the divider is just interfering. Go to the divider and choose none. Much better. I like it this way. Go back and click on done. Let's preview our page. Okay, the preview didn't actually load our latest changes. Sometimes this happens quite a bit, but don't worry, go back to your page. To solve this problem, we can save draft and preview once again. There it is. Now this is how you will be adding all kinds of elements and widgets. You just have to organize everything in rows, columns, drag and drop everything into your page. It's way easy. Now let's add one more icon and one more headline to the currently empty column. Now we face a new challenge. How can we add the same widgets with the same attributes to the other column in our row? We need the same stuff just with different content. That means a different icon and different text, but same color and sizes. Inside Origin, you can duplicate widgets easily, like this. Hover your cursor over the widget you want to duplicate and click on Duplicate. The duplicated widget will show up below the widget you just copied from. Now, you can click on the duplicated widget and drag it to the desired space and drop it there, like this. Do the same as you did with the headline widget. We just saved ourselves a lot of time. Now we just need to make a, a few changes. Let's take the icon, look for our smartphone icon. You can preview it. Click on done. Now let's change the headline text. And now change the subheadline text as well. When you are done, click on done. Now preview your page. There it is. You can see the new icon and new headlines in our page. But also, you can also notice that the columns are not symmetrical. The contents does not look fit at all. To solve this, we're going to edit our widgets content. To avoid this problem, we need to use almost the same amount of words and characters to occupy the same space in each row. Let's preview once again. See? Now are the, uh, about the same size. Let's adjust our browser window to see how it will look on a smartphone screen. It is of most importance to make sure our widgets look properly on mobile devices because today, as much as 70% of the visits to our, to our web page might come from mobile devices, such as smartphones.